a large model showman's engine, part 81. Making an ornamental stainless steel cylinder cover is a tedious and very slow job, but allows me to show some of the processes as I machine the part using a piece of stainless steel, which is far too big to start with, but at least I can show the making of this part in detail. Making this part really has been difficult for me. I've broken a couple of carbide tips and blunted two more. And here, as usual, I'm machining the cavity which will fit over the original cylinder cover. I really don't like gardening. I find it really extremely boring. But watching this makes me think, should I go into the garden and pull some weeds out? On whatever scale they use for slow, tedious and boring jobs, this one rates very highly. I can only machine it slowly, I do not use coolant, the lathe isn't in a cabinet and I don't want to get myself covered in this horrible smelly coolant stuff. Occasionally I do squirt some cutting lubricant at the work, which helps. The power of this machine, even when it's driven with only a one horsepower motor, is sufficient to tear my arm off. Especially when it's geared down like this, as I'm using the back gear system. In this clip I've stopped the lathe just to check whereabouts I am in the job. The original cylinder cover is 4.6 inches in diameter, so I need to machine a recess in this piece of stainless steel, ideally 3 quarters of an inch deep by 4.6 inches in diameter. And at this speed I really am doubting whether my lifespan is going to be long enough to see the end of the job. The clips that you've been watching in the last two episodes, and including this one, the third one, part 81, are heavily edited. For instance, if you ever get to the end of this video, these clips took four and a half hours to film. I take my hat off to machinists. They have some sort of a different kind of patience factor to me. They can focus and concentrate on just one part of the job at a time. But as my brain darts about trying to do different things, I was even contemplating making the water gauge supports for the water gauges on the Sweet William that I'm working on. But then I thought that's probably not a good idea because I may ruin this work and have to start again. And that for me would be like a trip to the asylum. Oh no, back in the padded cell again. Cutting this stainless steel with a negative rake tool really does take some doing. A lot of force is required to push the tool through the stainless steel. I'm really pleased with the finish that I'm getting on the piece of stainless steel though. From the point of view of a home workshop, these are quite deep cuts. It would be possible to run the lathe at a higher speed, but the problem is, from a safety point of view, I always have the belts to my machine tools fairly slack. Running my lathe at a higher speed under a heavy load is not a good idea. The belt slip, the lathe slows down, the tool jams and the tip breaks off. That's why generally speaking I use the back gear system. This is a problem, the swarf. I'm using a pair of grips to remove it from the area around the work because if the chuck grabs it, it flails it all over the workshop. I've been hit with this stuff many times and it cuts. And the other problem that's not obvious from these clips because I'm not driving the tool too hard, but the swarf is also extremely hot. Sometimes if you do go fast, well in fact most of the time, you can see small sparks around the cutting area and the swarf really is very hot stuff. It's not all bad news though. If you do pick up this swarf with your fingers, bear in mind it's very sharp and it will cut your fingers, but at least it's so hot it cauterizes the wound and you don't bleed, but it's very painful. Last night my eldest daughter and my first wife went out into York and I was really glad to do that because after a day in the workshop watching this happen, I really was ready for a change of scenery. We went to a place by York Minster called the Guy Fawkes Inn, which is a pub restaurant. And I can really recommend this place, particularly the Guy Fawkes pie. And I'm not supposed to eat things like that because I'm diabetic, but I do now and again, and it really was absolutely excellent. So if you ever find yourself in York in the UK, not New York in the USA, 
visit the Guy Fawkes Inn just round the corner from York Minster. After quite a while, the recess was starting to develop. Not quite deep enough, but nevertheless, I can do a test fit with the cylinder cover. I've cleaned the paint off round the outside edge. And I'm afraid this is me at my most stupid, making a total beginner's error. The cylinder cover wasn't really a tight fit in the recess, just a firm fit, but the minute that the cover went in, the outer part of the metal, the stainless steel, started to shrink and grabbed it. The piece I've been machining was quite hot. The cylinder cover was very cold. And I thought, never mind, I can use an Allen key in the hole and just persuade it to come out. But no, it was in there and it was in there solid. Lucky for me, this particular cylinder cover has two threaded holes in it at each side, and this is to allow you to withdraw the cylinder cover from the cylinder. And thankfully, by inserting a couple of quarter BSF Allen bolts and screwing them in towards the stainless steel cover, the original cylinder cover soon came loose. It was at this point that I decided to enlarge the diameter of the hole. As usual, making plenty of swarf in the process. Now it's time for a test fit. Ah, that's better. It's not an interference fit, it's more of a rattle fit, because when I have the cylinder cover bolted to the cylinder and I fit this ornamental cover, I do not want it to stick to the cylinder. The stainless steel cover will be held to the main cylinder using a 5 sixteenths of an inch diameter bolt. Once I drilled the hole, that was it for the turning operation on the other side. I turned the part over in the chuck and hear him tapping it with the hammer just to locate the cover accurately in the chuck jaws. Now I need to remove quite a lot of metal, both across the front by facing and also longitudinally. And before I get the deluge of silly comments from the experts, yes, I do know this piece of metal is too big, and I did it on purpose, so I can show various ways how not to do the job, like this. And just to explain why it looks like this, the part that isn't shiny was where the tool was blunt. I applied too much pressure to the tool tip on a longitudinal cut, and it chipped it. And then, when I used the damaged tip to face across the front, this is what it looked like. And if you've been paying attention, you will notice that I've just changed the tip. So now this is a new tip, it's cutting beautifully, and look at the finish on the piece of work. In this clip I'm taking a very light cut, so I've speeded up the lathe, it's not in back gear anymore. You still have to be careful though, if you're not using coolant, which gives you not only the cooling effect, but constant lubrication, you will probably get chatter if you go too fast. This is okay, particularly considering that the speed of the cutting tool on the power cross feed is also quite fast. I have personally found this job to be quite difficult and very slow, but I've turned this, the original rough sawn piece of stainless steel, into something much nicer. This is the cover before I turned it around in the chuck. I'm not going to labour the point by showing the machining of this side. The next time you see this cover, it will be almost finished. Time for me to go. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.